Angeles Lakers did not perform today the way that we had hoped. And before I break down the game and go through all the ins and outs, the Lakers still did their job, right? They did terrible this game, but you got a split on the road against the best home team in the entire league. That is something to be very positive about. That is something to be very excited about. Now, all the Lakers have to do is maintain home court, win your home games, and the series is over. You win the series, right? So the Lakers, again, when you are the underdog team, when you're the team that is on the road, your job is to win at least one of those road games, which the Lakers did. That being said, the Lakers had a real opportunity to go 2-0 on the road and very likely potentially get a sweep in the uh, in this series. But reality is, again, Memphis is the best home team in the entire league. Uh, they aren't a very good road team, so that's in the Lakers' favor. Uh, but you're not going to win every game. That's why you play seven games uh, for a series. Right? You're going to have these back and forth. You're going to drop games. You're going to have bad games. Uh, but what do you do over the course of that seven-game series is what really matters. Can you close out when it counts, when it matters? You knew the Memphis Grizzlies were going to be super desperate, and they had guys that stepped up in ways that that you just didn't really expect, right? Nobody really showed up for the Lakers. Uh, you had just bad games across the board outside of LeBron James and Rui Hachimura. Uh, but beyond that, you had the Grizzlies, who they had, one, the refs on their side clearly and blatantly. It wasn't all on the refs, though. Uh, this was, this game wasn't completely decided by the refs. It was, though, a big factor. And Triple J continues to get a whistle that nobody else seems to get. He just seems to get uh, this this type of whistle or this type of refereeing that nobody else can get. I mean, Anthony Davis was getting clobbered, uh, getting elbowed. Uh, you, had, you had a foul where Jared Vanderbilt literally got elbowed in the face by Jaron Jackson, and they called a foul on Jared Vanderbilt. But regardless, remove the referees. Uh, hopefully that switches to Lakers for home court. You'd imagine that that would be the case. Uh, you got to tip your hat to Memphis Grizzlies, right? Guys really stepped up for them, uh, especially Tillman. You know, uh, you heard uh, Desmond Baines talk about how Rui had a, a career night and all that stuff in game one. I mean, he won, he didn't. That's what he's done, and he continued to prove that tonight. But Tillman literally had a career night, and it took all of that for the Memphis Grizzlies to win. And look, the Lakers played about as bad of a game as they possibly could have, especially in that first half. Memphis played a very good game, had the refs on their side, and this was still a game that the Lakers felt like they should have won. This was still a game that the Lakers felt were right there with the opportunity to win. They're the better team. They are clearly the better team. Uh, even after this game, they are clearly the better team. Uh, the rotations, everything was fine. Guys just had bad games. Nobody really stepped up, and we need guys to be better at home. Usually roll guys, uh, usually play better at home. Anthony Davis, I don't think, is going to go 4 or 14 again. I expect him to be better. Uh, again, he was getting absolutely just clobbered down low. Uh, there was like two plays where he was going up and literally got pulled, and no whistle, no nothing. I expect that to change, hopefully, but... Regardless, you need better performances uh, from guys. Rui Hachimura definitely deserves credit and highlight. Again, absolutely incredible. Shot 60% from the field again. Shot 50% from three. 20 points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal. This is Rui. Like, seriously, this is now seven playoff games that Rui has had. He has scored double digits in all seven of those games, and he has scored 20 or more in four of those seven games. That, I mean, that's Rui Hachimura. He's not afraid of the moment. He's still a mismatch for this Memphis Grizzlies team with his size. I really like what I saw from him. He was being physical. He was getting to his spots. He was attacking and being aggressive, getting to the basket, not settling. I want to continue to see that from him. That was great. Defensively, I thought we could have been better, but we did clean it up in the second half. We held a team, look, that scores 116 points per game. We held them to 103 points. We just couldn't hit shots. If the Lakers could have just hit some shots, which you got to credit Memphis's uh, defense as well, right? Because, I mean, they you, you don't shoot this poorly without some defense. But the Lakers shot atrocious. They were 41% uh, and 27% from three. They were even 76% from the free throw line. 
had 12 turnovers. Uh, like I said in the uh, breakdown, the pregame breakdown, I wanted them to get that to 10 or fewer. Uh, th I mean, the difference in this game was early on, because Memphis and the Lakers basically played the same way. But if you looked at it early on, the the Memphis Grizzlies had 10 points on five turnovers, and they had a 10-point lead. That that was the difference, and they ended up winning by 10. Uh, not getting out in transition, giving like easy back doors early on. We lost this game early on, and we were playing catch-up the rest of the way. Outside of that, we were pretty much identical every stretch of the way. Um you know, uh, they shot 31% from three, 11 to 36. Uh, they also shot 21 free throws to our 21 free throws. We had like, what, zero free throws in the fourth quarter? How does that happen? When we were being physical, we were being aggressive, we were getting to the basket. I don't really know. But nonetheless, that's what ended up happening. Uh, we both had 11 offensive rebounds. Basically what it came down to. It was, the, it was basically the margins, the ins and outs. Memphis was working hard fighting, trying to get this win. They are still a very good team, very good team, without Ja Morant. They, are, statistically, by like every metric, are actually a better team than with than with Ja Morant. I don't personally believe that they are better without Ja. I think Ja makes them, like, legit, legit. But they have a better net rating. They score more points. They're a better defensive team. Basically, all the stats that matter say Memphis is better without Ja Morant because the ball moves more they're not so Ja reliant so you see a well-balanced attack usually that's what happened in this game right you had uh, all five starters in double figures and you had Luke Kennard with 13 off the bench and then Roddy almost had uh almost had double figures off the bench so you literally almost had seven guys in double figures off uh for this game where if you look at the Lakers the Lakers had four guys but it was just again poor game outside of Rui and LeBron uh, Rui and LeBron really were the only two that that heavily showed up in this game. Um, D'Angelo Russell, he's got to be better. He's got to play better. Uh, two of 11, one of five from the from the field is not going to cut it. I also think the early foul trouble really kind of affected his play and kind of didn't allow him to get in a rhythm. Like you saw in game one, he started off shooting poorly. He was like one of five, uh, 0 of four to start. And, uh, and then he got into that rhythm and then he finished shooting 60% the rest of the way. He finished the the game shooting, uh, what was it, like 7 to 12 or something like that the rest of the way. So that, I think, hindered him. But he has to be better regardless. He's got to be more aggressive, look for his shots. Uh, he's got to do a better job taking care of the ball. He had four assists, but he also had three turnovers. That's not going to get it done. Five points is just inexcusable uh, for a guy of his caliber, seven rebounds. Uh, but... I still have faith in D'Angelo Russell. I still believe he can get the job done. Um, he just he's got to find his groove. He's got to find his rhythm. You know, he's 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 shooting 32% so far on these two games. Uh, that's not ideal, but pick it up. He's 50. He's shooting 50% from the field during the regular season. 42% from three. I'm not even saying he has to do that, but he should be around 45% from the field and at least 36, 37% from three. At least be somewhere around average in this series. But I do believe that there will be a game that D'Lo plays really well. I do believe that there's a game that he'll step up. Uh, same thing with like guys like Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder, we've seen him play well and close games and play, be very efficient. Uh, Schroeder had a bad game. He had zero points, 16 minutes, 0 with 3 from the field, uh, two turnovers, three assists. Again, that's not getting it done. Jared Vanderbilt, high energy, uh, was great. Uh, he gave us eight points, eight rebounds, one block, two steals, and he had two turnovers. Again, turnovers seem to be a real problem, but it just it, it boiled down. It, it, was, it was simple. The, the things that happened today were easy fix. Make the adjustment. Stick to the units that you have. Those units clearly are working. It's just, again, not hitting shots. You make your shots, you win the game. It was that simple. The Lakers hit half of the shots, they or a quarter of the shots that they missed. They win this game. You know, if, if they just, if they had another guy step up outside of LeBron James and Rui, they win this game. If Reeves goes and gets you 20 instead of 12, they probably win this game. You know, if D'Lo gives you 10 instead of 5, you probably win this game. I know the Lakers lost by 10, but things change when you when you start going on runs. Also, LeBron's shot selection needs to be better. That's something that that is killing me as well. One of eight from three. If he has it going, I don't mind. You know, if he's you know, if he's 
two of five to start. Okay, you want to take a couple more threes. I don't mind him taking some threes, but I feel like he settles too much at the three. And we had that stretch in the third where we cut it to six. And we had a real opportunity here. LeBron had the ball. And instead of putting his head down and getting to the basket, putting putting the whistle on the ref, or even just going and getting a, a layup, he st- instead settles for a deep three. He misses it. They go down. They hit a three. We have a bad possession. They score. And all of a sudden, we're back down 11. And it's like you, you had a real opportunity to change the tides of the game. Memphis kind of looked like they were scrambling in that moment, right? And it's just like you go from an opportunity to to really kind of lead that momentum, take over and go for that win. The the Lakers just they, they just didn't have it today. And that happens sometimes. Again, it's seven game series, right? I still I said from day one, I thought the Lakers win this in six. That was my thoughts. Lakers are on pace to win this in six. Lakers, I needed the Lakers to steal one game in Memphis. They did. They stole game one. You win your two home games, you're up three games to one. I think you lose in Memphis that other game because Memphis is going to be desperate and, and it probably have some crazy game. If not, then you win in five. Perfect. But I think that they come back to L.A. and they win their L.A. game, and then there you go. They're, they advance the second round. They win in six. They get you know four days rest or whatever, depending on how the Warriors-Kings series goes. But the Lakers still have all of the advantage. Everything, the ball is still in their court. Just win your home games and it's over. That's all you got to do. Maintain home court advantage. Lakers have been a good home team with this new roster. They haven't been, like, if you look at their home record for the season, uh, I think they're only like two games over 500 or whatever. But if you look at their home team, home record with this current roster, they are good at home. Memphis only won 16 games on the road all season. So this is a real opportunity for Lakers. Anthony Davis has to be better. He has to. I know it was frustrating. They were fouling him. They were going at him. Uh, it just, it was ridiculous. There were several plays that you could just, I mean, you could point out and it was clear as day. Like, come on. Like, if you don't want to call all of them, at least call a couple of them. At least give them some type of, wh- I'm, even if you don't want to give them a fair whistle, give them a, 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 a low average whistle, right? At least give them the whistle that you would give some random role guy. Nothing. But, Still, he's got to find ways to fight through that. He's got to hit shots. He had some opportunities, some good looks that he usually hits, and he just didn't hit it. He's got to find ways. He still was great on the defensive end. He still controlled uh, just the, on the defensive side, which is good. Uh, but he's got he's got to find his offensive game. He's got to get that clicking. Again, LeBron James, he's got to do a better job of, of just decision-making, right? Knowing, like, if you're going to take some threes— through the course of the game, that's fine. But pick and choose when you're taking threes. LeBron's smart enough to know we have momentum. We just cut it to six when we were down 16. We just cut it from 16 to six. We have the ball. Let me go Let me go put my head down and go get a bucket and cut this to four, maybe even three, the old-fashioned way. And, and now, now it's a game. And they're scrambling. They're trying to figure it out. You go and take the lead. Like, this felt like a game that, like, if the Lakers took the lead at any point, they just took the lead that this game probably would have been over. That that Memphis would have felt like, man, like, we, we worked twice as hard. And we up 16. We let them back in, all that stuff. And now we just, like, this just felt like that kind of game. This felt like a game, like, we were waiting for that Lakers run that the Lakers usually have, you, you see the Lakers usually have like those, that 10 0 run or that 12 0 run or, you know, a 14 to two run or something like that. And that it just never came. And LeBron, I felt had a couple opportunities in this game to, to kind of push for that. And instead of actually settled and I, I want to see him have better shot selection. Now, Dylan Brooks was chirping, right? Talking about how LeBron's old and I don't respect anybody until you give me 40. Well, let's see. Let's see how LeBron responds in Game 3. I still don't want LeBron to just completely have to take over. I, we need role guys to step up. It can't be the LeBron James show. Uh, you know, if, if LeBron goes for 30, that's fine. Go for 30. But we need other guys to step up. I, I, I just believe that LeBron going and getting 40 just to prove Dylan Brooks, like, oh, I can still get 40, is not is not going to do us any justice. We need LeBron to go give us, you know, 25, 8, and 8. Anthony Davis, go get us, you know, 23, whatever, 22 to 25. 
uh, go get us 12 boards and then keep blocking shots, right? Go do that. Uh, I, I think we'll be fine. Guys got to step up. LeBron got to be making better decisions. Guys got to have that urgency and that energy. It just, we look like a team that said, hey, we won game one. Let's just get home and win it there, right? And, and that's not what you need to see. You need that urgency game in and game out, especially come the playoffs. We've seen the Lakers kind of flip flop, right? We've seen the Lakers go one game where they're just, they look like the best team in the league. And then the next game, it's like, ah, uh, like they're the worst team in the league. It's just this flip flop. They got to be more consistent and find that consistency. But still, I still believe the Lakers are the better team. I mean, this is two straight games, one where the Lakers basically controlled it start to finish outside of that, you know, uh, second quarter, outside of like an eight minute stretch. The Lakers dominated and controlled that game. And, and then in this game, the Lakers, even as badly as they played, and they played badly, as poorly as they played, even with the refs clearly uh, having some money on the Memphis Grizzlies, the Lakers still had opportunities to take over and win this game. They're the better team. I expect them to win. I still am sticking with six. Uh, maybe we win in five. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look, the Lakers, even in the year that they won the championship, what happened? The Lakers lost game one and uh, bo both against Portland and against Houston, and they didn't lose a game the rest of the way, right? Lakers won game one. I expect them to win games three and four. All of a sudden, they're up three games to one, and everyone will be like, okay, good, right? Right now, everyone's panicking. Everyone's freaking out. Everyone's losing their mind because the Lakers didn't go up 2-0. Relax. It's a basketball game. Memphis is the number two seed for a reason, with Ja Morant missing a good portion of games, right? So, in general... I think the Lakers will be fine. I think the Lakers are going to still win this series. There's not a doubt in my mind that the Lakers won't win this series. Uh, it would have been nice to go up 2-0. Absolutely. I would have loved that, as I'm sure all of us would have. But, again, it's a seven-game series for a reason. They are the home team. They are the best home team in the league for a reason. right? They are still very good, even without Jean Morant, for a reason. you know. So, in general, we'll be okay. I think the Lakers will be fine. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Think the Lakers are good? Think they're not? Is there any concern? Any panic? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below.